waiting for it to go live. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so as a brief recap, um, I started again after the Farah freeze, and um, or after the the freeze climbing that thing, and then I just had a segment where Farah stayed in the initial room and failed to find the crack. She just stood in the corner of the room, and then I came into this room, killed all the enemies, and then couldn't get through because Farah was supposed to stand on that button in the middle, and she never came into the room. So I went back into that room and tried to hit Farah to make her fucking activate and find the crack and go through it, and then the game froze again. And then I booted it up, Farah was in the correct place in this room, and or she was near the crack and she ran over to the button and sat on it. So I guess after loading the game she'd like loaded in the correct area. Um, and then um, I climbed this thing, and um, I found out that Game Capture HD was not working. That's a list of things that just happened, so I just rebooted it. Now Farah seems to be in the right place, and the stream seems to be working, and everything seems to be alright. Where are you supposed to climb up from? Oh, here. Both places, the only way to climb up is to, um, whoa, camera. Fucking Prince. That was glorious. I guess it's here. Perspective and shit. Prince, turn around. This is just a really buggy area in terms of game freezing. I hear a sand cloud. That door doesn't look so strong. Do you think you could smash it with your sword? Who do you think I am? Rustam? I hear a sand cloud nearby. I think it's on the second floor. Later far. I just need to get out of this area as fast as possible. This area is not good for my health. Alright. Oh shit. I never pushed the block down, did I? Oops. I like opened that door for the block and then I didn't do anything with it. I don't know how to, you're supposed to get down there without taking damage. It looks like you have to take force damage to get down here. Because this is like the only place you can drop from. Alright, thankfully transitioning between these two screens has not frozen my game yet. This is what I'm supposed to actually do. Fortunately, there's water on both sides, so it's not very hard to keep healthy, but it just seems weird that you're taking force damage there. Maybe there's a way you can fall and land on the pole. Alright, the less time I spend in this room, the better. Wow, this block is kind of bugged. It's, like, black. strange. And now it is restored to its normal color.
Ah, oh, Sand Cloud. What I was here for this whole time. Fortunately, you never have to go that far out of your way to get a Sand Cloud. I kind of like how they designed this room. So this is this big elaborate path you can take all the way through it. That you can't even reach from the bottom. I'm sure there's a major skip here. I'm pretty sure there's quite a lot of sequence breaking in this game. Even though it seems like there wouldn't be any. <coughs> that one's not even round. I don't know how he spins around it like that. Must hurt the fuck out of his hands. there being quite a lot of enemies here. I did not want that. Sometimes I'm trying to target one enemy and it auto-targets another enemy. It's normally pretty good about detecting who you want it to hit. Looks like the maximum number of enemies here is only three. Somewhere it's four. Normally the game will keep on pumping four enemies at you until you, uh... Go. Run on. Good runs with glitches are never silly. I consider glitching almost a standard component of speedrunning. I think that's where a lot of the entertainment is. And I got frozen. And I unfroze. I could have just rewound to fi fix that problem. If the prince ever freezes, you can rewind if you're fast enough. The rewind window is an infinite though, so you have to act kind of fast. I'm actually running really low on health, and I need to be a little bit careful now. I'm still not that close to dying because I've got all this, uh, all these available rewinds. It's really dangerous to play like this side because you can get hit during the like the absorb of an enemy, which automatically resets your rewind window. So if I want to play really safe, I'll kill all enemies before I start building one. You know me. Unfortunately, there's no way to get health during a fight. Unless there's a source of water. I really should have saved at that save point. Famous last word. I think I see that glow you were talking about. Be careful. I don't understand why the sword is glowing. That's the Saint Cloud Prince, that's not the glow. Game letting me know that I'm dying. But I already know. This is the Saint Cloud I heard earlier. Here it is. Here's the sword. Prince just leaves his previous sword here, I guess.
it is noticeably stronger than the previous sword. Enemies have a harder time blocking attacks from it, and it kills them in fewer hits. Health upgrade. So right now we've had two hard locks and a soft lock. There are four swords in the game plus the dagger. sword. Maybe only once the combat starts. Yeah, she says it. It's not the sword you had before. It's said this palace was built on the ruins of an even more ancient one. But I thought that was just a story. You should use one sword for each limb and become Man Sand Spider. I think if you had suggested that, they would have actually been a popular idea. It would have taken off. Please, please don't bug out Farah. Thank you for not bugging out Farah. I'm on edge now because of the sheer amount of glitching that's been happening. This is a tough sword, clearly you don't understand. I think with that fall you can do a tumble and avoid damage. And maybe for the other one too. If you tumble while landing you don't take fall damage from some falls. The ones that do just a little bit. Oh, I can't go through this. The prince? Like, this is so risky. What's his end goal? Look at this. Does he know this is going to be able to get like all the way? He's going to actually be able to climb up again? What if he just gets stuck here and there's no way back out? I guess he could always rewind time. Joke's on me. It's not inconceivable to be able to break, um... Here I am. Break wood with a sword. It's inconceivable that I wouldn't be able to do it before I got this cool new sword. Maybe my previous sword was styrofoam. Took me a little while to figure out this is where you're supposed to go. Kind of cryptic, really. There's a ledge right below you. All right, game, got me again. Trying to find flaws, but there are none. There you are. This is where the secret is. This this wall is not. It's not cracked. It's solid, and you can turn this thing. And it shuts that door over there and opens this door. But you can also turn the door or turn the crank this way. And I think they removed it in the HD re release, which is a shame. But if you turn it here, it locks both doors. And then this wall becomes breakable. And then if you break this wall, you unlock Prince of Persia Classic. You unlock a faithful rendition of the first Prince of Persia game. Or no, I think it's just. I forget how it works. I think it's a faithful recreation of the first Prince of Persia game in the PS2 version. In GameCube version, there's nothing, I think. And then in, in the Xbox version, it's a faithful recreation of Prince of Persia 2. Or something like that. It's like they actually did a bunch of stuff with it. But in this version, they just take it out. Which is a shame, because it was cool. And they ended up releasing uh, the original Prince of Persia on like PSN I think and uh, WiiWare uh, starring this prince it was kind of cool like an HD remake of the original Prince of Persia that was dumb 
That was dumb. I need fire to get out on the other side and open up this path for me. GameCube had pop one. I think there was one version that had nothing. Maybe the PC version. Here I am. Can you make it? Don't step off that switch. You made it. I just soft locked. Okay, I just had to get her climbing the ladder before I could start. Probably because she gets a little buggy on the ladder. This room has a lot of enemies, I remember. Every enemy here can be killed with this attack, I think. Yeah. That's like the fastest way to kill enemies. Well, those guys can those guys can block it. I didn't know that. And those guys can block the jump over. So I've got to do different attacks based on which one I'm trying to kill. Wow, power's getting fucked up. Also, this enemy is surprisingly beefy. Little hook guy. He wasn't even guaranteed one shot from the jump over. I thought it was one of the normal versions that had nothing. The blue guy. Car is being useless. Also, that was cool. the blue one. Jesus Christ. I actually, the blue enemies are the first prominent enemy that are immune to the jump over. And I actually thought the game got really hard when these guys started being a regular enemy. Because it was like the first enemy I had to kill without using the jump over. They're like the first enemy where you had to actually be tactical, I thought. Nope. They're still on attack, they one shots them. They just didn't put a fucking one broken skill I had. I was holding her out. She's actually fucking back out pretty good. save because I haven't saved in a while. I'm kind of getting nervous. I don't know if it's old games versus games today or like western games versus eastern games, but I feel like I play a lot more western games now than I did when I was a kid. I used to play a lot of eastern games when I was a kid, Japanese games. And I feel like there are way more bugs in video games now than there used to be. The only bugs I remember in old games that really stuck with me were because the games were really broken down by being meticulously played. Like um, climbing through that one uh, ceiling in Mario 64, or that weird bug that game overs you on the rooftop. I think there's some cool stuff you can do in this room. What? Oh. I was looking at the chat while I was doing that. Um, in later games, they make it so if you hold the button, it breaks open doors, but in this game, it's um, hit the button three times. We'll need to open this door. Look for a switch. Isn't there a... I thought that was a little bit of dialogue. The door's I was like, open. what? I'm going in. 
Don't wait for me. I remember thinking so this was one of the hardest streams I'd ever played because every time I did it, Far died. From the kitchen. Scant hours ago, these tables had been filled with men, joking in camaraderie over their evening meal. Just as my father's men do back home in Syrah. It's because they think themselves safe within the world. No Easiest way to do this is to stay far away from Far because enemies will tend towards you. Most of these enemies are immune to jump over. They buy off the wall. The first appearance of the big guy with the sword. They're also here to tell you that you can't jump over them. And use a color coded to let you know how to kill them. It's unbelievable how fast this makes combat in this game. It's unbelievable how broken this is. These guys will occasionally counter you. When they're in blocking mode, there's like nothing. What you're supposed to do is counter their attack. I kept on missing it because I forgot the timing. It's way early. <coughs> it's the second wave, I remember. Maybe a third. Getting fucked. That fight is very long and it's hard to avoid Farah taking a little bit of damage. And the longer it drags out, the more likely it is Farah is going to take a lot of damage. And because that fight is really long, uh, because you can't you do the quick instant kill understand. that most people figure out. <sighs> so a lot of, like, it's understandable that scene would be really hard. That fight. I think we're one away from a new sand tank. I don't think I've ever even used up my sand tanks. I don't think I've ever even used more than one at a time. This series of rooms is kind of cool. Scaffolding. I think that's only for falling down, not climbing up. Sand tanks let you rewind. And also slow down. I think that's the only two things they do actually, so there's no etc. there. Friends! See, I just used one. What the fuck? I like bugged out. Let me rewind farther. He didn't hit the wall like he normally does. There we go. That was fine. I'm not gonna use rewind there. I overmashed. Poles. All of these poles pop up because of that one machine I activated right at the beginning of the game. With that guy. No, they are obstructing my path and there are no enemies around. The ugly nature of the beast. Ah! something else in later games. Prince? Why would you think that's what I wanted you to do? I think this causes a ladder to pop out. How does she
You just have infinite arrows. Is she plucking the arrows out of enemies she kills? Is Thanks. it a magic bow? Don't mention it. Don't mention it. I'd actually accept that it was a magic bow. I'd be like, okay. I can't remember what happens if you have her kill you. She attacks you if you attack her. But I don't remember if there's like a special line of dialogue if she kills you. We'll need to cross that bridge. Please, Farah. Farah, please. Now what? There we go. Plucking yeah. arrows out of the buggy coding of the game. Camera angle in this room is really weird. Imagine if that rock wasn't there, I would have just game overed. There's a way to fall down here. That is not it. It should, like, the camera should pan to show me where it is. Yeah. The camera sure is nice. Fire, like, climbs down. This is one of the harder fights in the game as well. If only because it's very easy A to fall off the bridge, B for Fire to fall off the bridge. I think it's actually a skippable fight. I think you can just run across and try to follow you. The trick is not to fight on the bridge. That's what I found. The trick is to fight against this wall. Farah like doesn't try to avoid enemies in this fight. She doesn't usually, but at least there's like a lot of area. She's right in the middle of everything. It's nearly impossible to do anything about that. I've had her fall off the bridge too. Like sometimes she's just standing near the edge and an enemy bumps her off. And then it's just like, okay. Can't rewind if you read that. You actually can. Let me back there doing. <coughs> this is the map I was thinking of. The... Again, this is a fight that became far easier. Once I land to jump off walls. The enemies are pretty tough without that. I think Farah with her bow would make even the smallest attempt to avoid danger. Looks like this is the last guy. I ended up going pretty good. Wild Dive is a one-hit KO on every single enemy it works on. It literally does the maximum damage threshold in the game. visions. I'm probably around 50% of the way through the game now. Done. I'll stop the story from here this time. Farah's ass. Wow, the animation on those birds was really shitty. I don't remember this room. I think I'll remember it by climbing a bit. Then, shall I? How about you climb it, bitch? Yeah, I had a hard lock in this room one time. It was in the PC version, not in this version. It stopped. Pull it again. 
I think I see how this works. Try pulling yours now. Now pull the lever. Woo! Crap, please. Her side doesn't cover it with fucking saw blades and shit. This is where I hard locked. The game like pen to me but never gave control back to me. So I like couldn't move when I was here. <gasps> now I think I jump out that hole. Uh. Ah yes. A little bit more naked. The farther you are in the game, the less dressed the prince is. We have now lost the hat in both sleeves. I kind of like ongoing like themes like that. Like um in Die Hard, John McClane's feet getting fucked up. The stuff that happens progressively more and more so, and they just build up to it even though it's not really relevant to the plot. If only Farah got less dressed. She gets less dressed in the third game. how each room is designed exactly so you can only progress through with um, two people with these exact qualities. If you can fit under this gate, I'll really be impressed. I knew that hole was there. I just wanted to see if you knew. I remember this bridge. Keep running! Any fight where you have to fight vultures is far easier when Pharaoh's present because she one-shots them. She doesn't attack them very fast, though. These guys make really weird buggy sound effects. I'm not supposed to make noises like this. Oh, those noises are normal. It's like the popping when their wings cry. Their accuracy's not looking so good. Jerp does games is now hosting you for 32 viewers. I don't even know who Drip is. Or why he would care about this playthrough. Is that one of my followers? I I happily accept the Drip raid. I only ask that everyone who's doing the Drip raid don't just stay in Drip's channel and they come to mine. Or else I can't see whatever they post. Whenever you're hosting a channel you have to like... Very funny. Come on, open the gate. No, I mean it! It's really broken! Hi everyone. I'm to fail. Right. I do fighting game tutorials. You go on down. I'll Sometimes find I play way Prince of Persia. Try not to take too long. I can't. I think I should jump to that pole. I never host people, I should use my powers for good. I should host people. I 
I like these little segments. It's kind of fun. Whether you're going up or down. This part's cool. Everything breaks. There's a lot of segments like that in Warrior Within, too. We're trying to run around and... Just figuring out where you followed you after seeing some of your Street Fighter videos. Wow, cool. I appreciate it. That was not the right idea, was it? I think I'm supposed to hang off that edge, not run along the wall. I should make a new Street Fighter video today. I don't know which one I should make, though. 41 viewers. That's like an amount that I normally get when playing a fighting game. But here I'm doing something that, like... That's a new sand tank. Here I'm doing something far less interesting to the common man. Here I am but a casual and not an expert. The sarcasm, prepare for the sarcasm. I'll just ask the first sound creature I run into. Could you direct me to the bath, please? Well, Proximity option select. I already did that. I'll meet you at the baths. She orders me around as if I were a servant. It's my own fault. With women, you need to show them you're in charge right from the start. Or they'll walk all over you. Those red pill I comments. Probably because I felt sorry for her. Well, it stops now. From now on, she'll have to toe the line. One of the biggest reasons I've slowed down my tutorial making is I've made a tutorial for virtually everything that's like something that I could easily make a tutorial for. This room is kind of... I don't like the design of it. It's kind of hard to navigate. You have to do a lot of dumb stuff. It's not very intuitive. And these damn vultures, too. You can't block. Hit them at the right time. I almost always fail at it, so what I do is intentionally eat the damage and then climb back up and hit them. Got him. They fixed this mechanic a little in the sequels. It's not very well... God damn it. Not very well formulated in the first game. They cannot knock you off, they can only knock you to the edge. They don't attack fast enough to hit you while you're on the edge. Footsies? I've done a lot of stuff on footsies, but I've never done anything on footsies as a whole because it's way too general a concept. If I did, and I have thought about it, I would define footsies because a lot of people don't even seem to understand what the fuck it is. It's very general. Making a tutorial for footsies would be like... It's like an impossible task. It would be like a 50 part tutorial. Right, I made it to the bottom. No, I'm not even the first. That's the thing about it that makes it, like, so difficult. Is a lot of people don't realize that, um, they already watch Footsie videos all the time. 
I've made a bunch of footsie videos. I've never made one specifically footsies. But like... The empty cancel video I made was about footsies. That's a footsie technique. That's something you can do to win in footsies. People don't realize the spectrum of footsies. That's kind of true. It's just when both players have full control over their character. That's literally what footsies is. Neither player has committed to something where they can be, like, heard on reaction to it. Yeah, it's literally neutral. In footsies and in neutral are um, synony uh, synonymous. I've got to make it to that gate before it closes. And all the things that I normally jump across are kind of like wonky right now. I changed the layout. I closed all the gates and whatnot. Whiff punishing is an element of footsies. There are so many elements of footsies. Video. Poke, counter poke, whiff punish. Being able to set up trades you can combo out of is an element of footsies, just to give you an example of how extreme it can get, how specific. Whoa. That was stupid and I didn't die. I feel like I'm jumping down paths that would have killed me in the previous. That killed me. Can I really not run along this? Okay, I can. There's a health upgrade here. The best guide of footsies I've ever seen is Majestro's um, footsie handbook. I think that's the deepest I've ever seen anyone get with it any single person get with it. But even then, it's not like a full compendium of everything. It's like impossible to do a full compendium of everything. Never forget that I was the one who ruined Juicebox's opinion of Third Strike. Because I was the first person who exposed him. Juicebox was used to just winning free against everyone. Defended third strike as being the only game that was still like true to concepts of rushdown and stuff like that. Third strike was the last bastion of skill in Street Fighter. Or some nonsense like that. This area was extraordinarily buggy in the PC version. The water flow didn't work properly. So, like, if you're standing in the water, you literally could not go against the current. And you would get swept with the current really, really quickly. So it was nearly impossible to climb this thing, and it was also nearly impossible to avoid dying. I'm not going to die in two hits instead of one. under this. Rare footage of a video game that features a waterfall that does not have a cave behind the waterfall. What kind of weird tree is this that grew between two points? Some 
and a sand tree. I think this is the first appearance of bats in the game. They are annoying. If they're one of the things in this game I would have rather forgotten. They do spawn like the competition or not. When people don't like, whoa, 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 I could have died right there. When people don't like losing, but they also don't like winning. It makes it sound like he just doesn't like fighting games, really. I don't think I've ever killed all the bats. You can keep on killing them until they're down to, I think, three. Or less. And then they fly away. But it's hard to kill more than a couple at a time. Kill a few, they all like spread around trying to hide and they come back together. I think the first time I did this, I just fell. Like I just dropped to that lower one. From this one. You mean it's not fun to admit someone's better than you? I don't know, I don't mind that. I joke sometimes that I'm the best third strike player in America, but I'm not. Done. I'll stop the story from here this time. I certainly wasn't in the heyday of the game. The only reason I'm even remotely good is that everyone else better than me has quit. And it's not even everyone, there are still people who play who are better than me. I do feel like I retain my skill better than most people though. There are people who I think were clearly uh, hold on a second. No! I feel like people shouldn't be ashamed if they're not the best. And I feel like if you know you're not the best, then finding someone better than you shouldn't be a big deal. Because you have that expectation that person exists. I think you should try and be better than that person. Can't see anything. I didn't even look. I was like reading the chat for that entire... There's nothing here. That was weird. I hear that a lot from people. They're afraid they're not improving. I'm sure it's... I don't think it's true. I mean, I think a lot of people improve at different speeds. And I think a lot of people who say they're not improving are not improving the things they want to improve at. Or not improving fast enough. I think they're probably still fixing up their muscle memory, which is something you practice literally every time you play the game. Um, but if you want to improve at other stuff, uh, that's actually the video I was going to make next, is how to look at something, how to find a weakness and turn it into a strength. That's super broad. That's not what the video is going to be about. It was going to be how to analyze, how to look for a thing that you suffer against and find a way to stop it. How to single out and deal with something. That was the wrong direction. You should find you you should watch your own replays. Every single time you play the game, the game saves your archives. It's not like they're gone. really healthy to um, rewatch a replay and look where you lost the majority of your health. 
because there's very little randomness in Street Fighter. There's lots of chaos, but there's almost no randomness. I think the single most important thing to getting to improving is having building yourself an expectation. You need to figure out something that your opponent is doing, and then you need to be like, if he did that now, this would be the ideal thing to do. And then once you know what that ideal thing is, and they happen to do that thing, like, you'll be ready for it. Like, a lot of people have really, really bad Abara, and they'll be like, um, oh man, I wasn't ready for that punish at all something like that. I wasn't ready for that at all in any situation. They'll get like a stand strong. They get like a huge opportunity. They only get a stand strong and it's just like, oh, I really played that poorly. I feel like you can go up here. What does it lead to? I want to know. What is this place? What's over there? But if you suck at punishing DPs and then one day you're just like, you know, if he happens to DP here, my max damage would be ultra. And then you wouldn't have the problem of, of oops, I only did, like, stay in fierce, uppercut, I didn't punish with ultra. Because you were ready to do ultra, you thought about, you know, what would happen. And then you would get way more damage on that punish. not rise to expectation. We fall back on experience. How well you do is fully based on how prepared you are. Mirror matches are a really easy way to improve because you can see a correct way of playing a match whether you do it or whether the opponent does it. I actually archive most of my footage, not for my sake, but for my players, my viewers. Or not my viewers, but like my, the people I play against. A lot of people ask, hey, like, can you upload replays of all that nonsense? Not a big deal for me. It also lets me put easy stuff on. I could break down some of your footage in an instant, Crookie. Tell you what to do to get better. I don't think that you really even I'll believe that you from here don't know time. what to do to get better. I think you do know because you probably know what good Makoto looks like just from like turny stuff. And you can easily say, wow, I don't play like, I don't play like V-Ryu. I can say that, I don't play like V-Ryu. And all the things he does that I don't do are things that I should do. And the question is merely, um, when are good times to do the things he does? The beautiful thing about Street Fighter is there's all these good footage of the pros. Sand cloud over there. Sand cloud over there. This is one of the more confusing rooms in the game. I'm always afraid I'm going to miss something here. The camera does a lot to steer you, though. do that once I'm not playing Prince of Persia.
There's so many games where you swing from ropes and jump to things. I wonder what that's like in real life. Fuck. That wasn't too bad. Fuck. That wasn't too bad either. Is that a sand cloud? Motherfucker. I don't think it was that laggy between me and Cricky. I think it was like the normal amount of lag that I get versus everyone, which is minimal. Thanks. That is a bug bat. It's cute, I like it. <gasps> that worked! That is not the way you're supposed to get down there, but I didn't take any fall damage. Or any damage, like, on the way down. That was cool. Stand here. Fukiyaga is your most rewarding. Stand strong also works, I guess. So does Quetch Roundhouse, I guess. Fukiyaga is kind of an ideal. You can also NTR with Ultra 1. It's a lot better than people give it credit for. Well, NTR Ultra 1 is actually a pretty good thing for Makoto. But, uh, no anti-air is far worse than the crouch medium kick, and crouch medium kick is the most reliable option she has. So, you know. You just have to climb to get out of here from where I am. But you can also go to this little door, which I didn't... This is the very last health upgrade I discovered. I think there's a sand cloud in here, too. I like how that trap is still making noise even though I'm not in the Zod anymore. The most important thing at the beginning is fighting uh, means of execution. And by that I mean a pad or a stick or something. That is consistent so that you cannot, so that you can remove what you're playing on from the question of execution. You can make it just yourself. I consider the 360 pad to not be a particularly good pad. I like how this thing just breaks as soon as I get off it. 
Like if it broke it even a second sooner, my entire quest would have been nothing. There's a lot of happenstance in this game. Anti Makoto stuff. Be well aware of Anti Makoto stuff if you play her. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. Don't know how to pressure me on wake up. It's Makoto. You just throw me on wake up. DX Chop loses. DX Command Grab loses. Everything except throw loses. Meaty stand strong, Karakusa. And then once I'm trying to jump out of those, you hit me with that meaty stand strong, stand strong to catch my jump out. can't see what I'm doing. I absolutely spam towards me punch when I'm Makoto. I think it's one of the best normals in the game actually. I'm surprised that other people don't use it that much. It lets you keep frame advantage and uh, uh, distance. Like, it lets you keep close range and frame advantage, which almost no attacks let you do. It's kind of like Makoto, it's kind of like Dudley's towards forward or Cody's towards strong in that regard. Never go into a game with a million things to practice. Work on those one by one. Alright, when I was playing the PC version of the game, this was the hardest room in the entire game. I would jump through the rope every single time. I literally, in the PC version, I did not successfully grab the rope once. It was just impossible. I could not grab the rope. I would just jump through it. And I don't remember how I, remember I didn't use the rope. There was some really weird wall climb that actually worked, but it was like super specific. I don't remember. No, I couldn't I couldn't jump onto the rope, but from one very particular angle I could jump onto the rope. And I had to try and jump from that very particular angle. And I tried like a million times and only once in a while I would grab it. That was it. Frame traps into command grab are useful. Frame traps. Makoto's entire basis of her frame traps are the presence of that command grab. That command grab does more damage than I think every other command grab in the game. And people trying to jump out of it. Can't see what I'm doing.
You actually can use spiral arrows in footsies, and it's not even a bad idea. I have personally seen Sako get, uh... Oh yeah, there's one of these guys. I have personally seen Sako get max range, uh... Light spiral arrow, which is safe. And it hit, and he confirmed it to medium suitor. Mid-screen. Mid-screen juggle of max range. Get the blue guy. Damn it. Max range light spiral arrow into medium super is a juggle that works mid screen. Max range light spiral arrow only. It's fucking incredible, blew my mind. Every time Sokka plays, I see shit I've never played, I've seen before. I feel like Sokka plays almost exactly like me, but a million times better in every way. I feel like his a big part of his game plan is trying to land something really strange. Before you can get to a point where anti-airing is uh, unconscious, you first have to work to a point where it's conscious. The truth is, people are going to start not ready to anti-air. So then, like new, they're going to be unprepared for anti-airs. And the way, the easiest way to get to start doing NTS reliably is to um, literally wait and watch for jumps. Just like do nothing except expect the jump. And the honest truth is, you have to go through a point where you just are doing that all the time. You just have to always be waiting for the jump. You have to always be thinking, if he jumped here, what would I do? And then eventually, um, it becomes so second nature that you can react to a jump. Easier for some characters than others. Sakura just has to hit Crouch Fierce at virtually all ranges where it works. What am I doing? Which I think has to choose between like five different anti airs depending on the angle of the character. I'm pretty sure there's nothing like behind any of these doors. Whoa, I didn't mean to say. 